this is Rani Chopra. When the housing bubble burst and the US economy was facing a financial meltdown, the Fed introduced quantitative easing. In November, a second round of quantitative easing, termed as QE2, was announced with the government planning to purchase anywhere from 850 to 900 billion in government securities. In common terms, the Fed is creating money, buying treasuries and mortgage-backed securities and artificially increasing the supply of money that is being pumped into the stock market. The Federal Reserve is currently buying up to 70% of government bonds ever since QE2 began. With PIMCO, the world's biggest bond fund, reducing its treasury holdings to zero, the question remains. Who will buy the treasuries when the Fed doesn't? Analysts believe stock and bond prices are artificially inflated by the government stimulus. Are we ready to deal with the consequences of another market correction when QE2 ends? When QE2 ends, over 2.35 trillion of government financing basically ends. During the economic boom of 2004, 5 and 6, Credit growth was greater than the nominal GDP growth. But since the financial meltdown, we have seen a negative credit growth and the only growth in the private sector is the one sustained by the Fed through the QE2. Will the private sectors continue to grow when QE2 ends? The biggest challenge that the Fed faces is how it plans to reduce over 2.35 trillion of balance sheet debt. The question everyone is asking is, will there be a QE3? I believe that the Fed will wait and see if the economy stabilizes. If bond yield rises and the stock market strengthens, there will be no need for a QE3. But with global inflation and slow economic recovery, combined with high energy costs and lower employment figures, QE3 may be unavoidable.